guys, welcome back to my channel. It is the most wonderful time of the year, and I'm not just saying that because Christmas is in a couple of days. We are talking about my year-end favorites. I love these videos so much. I look forward to them all year long, and of course, I'm excited to share with you guys the products I've really been loving throughout the last year. So here is how my best of 2019 videos are going to go this week. We're gonna kick things off talking about my favorite higher-end products of the year, followed by my favorite drugstore products of the year, and then I'm going to have a completely separate eyeshadow palette dedicated video because let me tell you guys this was the year of trying out far too many eyeshadow palettes it's actually a little bit embarrassing and I hope that you guys are as excited about these as I am for those of you that are new to my channel I want to give you a special welcome I hope that you enjoyed this video and of course if you do please hit that subscribe button before you leave make sure you click that notification bell if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload a new video we do have a lot to talk about today so let's get into the best high-end products that I tried in 2019 all right guys so I actually don't have a ton of liquid complexion products to share with you guys. I didn't try out a lot of higher end foundations this year. And also if you watch my channel, you guys probably know that I'm not huge on primers, but I do have one absolute favorite that I really fell in love with this year and it is from Charlotte Tilbury. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is just a beautiful multi-purpose product. You can use this as primer. It is very luminous. It has this very pearly luminous quality to it. It is more of a skin tone color so it's kind of like if you took a primer, a liquid highlighter, and a very light coverage foundation and mixed all of those things together in this glorious formula. That's kind of what you would get with this product. The way I most prefer using this is as a liquid highlighter, unless I'm going on top of it with something very, very light in coverage. I would say if you're someone that's a little bit older that you like the idea of highlighting, but you're very, very sensitive to pretty much any highlighter emphasizing texture on your skin. This gives you such a beautiful, subtle glow to your skin. And the consistency of this is unlike anything that I've tried from the drugstore. There's a lot of drugstore products that I think give similar effects to this, but I haven't found anything that's quite as refined and smooth and creamy and just really luxurious feeling as this thing. Now, whether or not that makes this worth the near $50 cost, that's gonna be based on your personal preferences, what your personal situation is, whether or not you like to invest in higher end products. But I do think this is a beautiful product to invest in if those sound like things that you would enjoy. I'm really happy that I purchased this even though initially I was a little bit skeptical. The next product I have to mention for you guys, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but these are not in really any particular order. I'm kind of just going in order of categories. But the next one, if you've been around my channel for even a month and a half, I am positive that you will not be surprised by this. It is the Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick in the color Baked. I love this thing. This was the year that I really kind of got on board with cream cheek products. It's really hard to explain the type of product this is because it's not gonna remain glossy and dewy and kind of emollient on your skin. It does set, but it doesn't set to a powder. I don't quite know how that works. All I know is that this is just really easy to blend. The color of it is perfect. It works great as like a bronzer slash contour. The value on this thing is incredible. You get years worth of product inside here. It's 24 or $28, which for how much you're getting, I think is an absolute still. I think that you probably couldn't find a cream product at the drugstore price per ounce, even close to what this is. So even though it's higher end, I still think this is a really good value and the product itself, the formula is just amazing. So my next product is kind of a combination of a couple of products and we're talking about Hourglass. This was the year that I tried out Hourglass for the first time. I started off with this little guy right here. This is their mini bronzer. This one is in the color Diffused Bronze Light. And then this fall I did pick up their Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Ghost Edition base palette. There are some things about this palette that I don't totally love but what I'm specifically mentioning as the best of for 2019 today are the blushes and the bronzers. Now everything that people say about Hourglass's formula I think is absolutely true. I am a little reluctant to admit that because as beautiful as they are I don't think there's any makeup product out there that is worth going into debt over but that said these are absolutely stunning. The formula is just so special. That's really the only way I can put it. It's luminous, it's radiant, it's subtle but it gives you just this perfect amount of color. So let me just swatch these two bronzers for you guys. I think I actually prefer the bronzer shade in this one. It is a little bit darker. This bronzer is in the color Eternal Bronze Light. So I'm going to swatch this for you and just be aware the swatches of Hourglass products are super subtle. Sometimes you can't even really see them in a swatch and they almost seem like they just won't do anything at all. So here is the one from the Ghost edit and this is the diffused bronze light. This one's just a hint darker than this one right here but I think you can probably see that very subtle satiny kind of sheen that is just so pretty on the cheeks. I absolutely love 
both of these bronzers. I would say that if you have very, very fair skin, I would probably go with the Diffused Bronze Light shade. I know they have other shades as well. These are just the two that I have tried. As for the blushes, they are that same beautiful formula. So let me just swatch these two for you guys. You can see this one's a little bit more of like a berry tone. This one's more of just a kind of bubblegum kind of pink, but in the softest and sheerest, most beautiful way. They're absolutely stunning. The finishing powders in here, I'm still gathering my thoughts on. And I think that for this being $80, the amount of product you get inside here, I don't think is fantastic. I think you're better off value-wise getting their full-size products, which I know are also expensive, and you're certainly not getting the variety. But if you end up not loving everything inside of here, I kind of think it's almost worth going for the full size ones. With that said, I'm really happy that I have this. I do love the under eye setting powder, but today specifically, I really just wanted to feature their blushes and bronzers. As much as I think they're just overpriced and more expensive than I'm typically comfortable spending, I can't deny that whenever I use them, they just look beautiful on the cheeks. So the next thing I have to mention for you guys is a blush from Bare Minerals. This is their Bounce and Blur blush in the color Blurred Buff. This is relatively new to me. I've only had this for a couple of months, but this was one of those products that I fell in love with instantly and had a hard time putting it down. The form of this is really beautiful. It's not a cream, but it's also not a powder. It's really interesting. I've never quite experienced anything like it, but it's a beautiful color. This is one of those colors that goes with pretty much any look that's leaning slightly either neutral or warm. It's just such a beautiful beautiful blush. Super happy with this color and with this formula. I think it's lovely. It lasts pretty well on my cheeks and it just looks so healthy and gives you that perfect color and subtle sheen. Next up is another cream bronzer product and that is the Nude Sticks Nudies Matte Bronzing Stick in the color Sunkissed. This is such a beautiful product. So here it is right here. I know it does look a little bit dark but when you apply this with a stippling brush which is the very best way to apply most of these cream products that I am talking about today it gives you the prettiest color on the cheeks. It's almost like a terracotta sort of bronzy, rosy looking color that's that kind of perfect merge between a blush and a bronzer. I love those kind of colors because I think if you are someone that's in a hurry, you want to just throw something on your cheeks and run out the door, this is the type of color and product that I think is perfect for that because it kind of doubles as a bronzer and a blush at the same time. Just very multi-purpose. I feel like it would suit a lot of skin tones. You can sheer it out if you have very fair skin or you could build it up if you have deeper skin. It's just a beautiful, beautiful color, beautiful formula. I really have been loving this this year. Another creamier cheek product that I've been loving, you'll definitely see a theme in a lot of these favorite products this year is this one here from Kosas. This is their cream color and light cheek palette. It has a cream blush and then also a cream highlighter in here. This was a recommendation from Jessica Braun and when I first got this I actually wasn't sure I liked it. It's a very unique formula. When you first open it or first get it or if you haven't used it for a while it looks like a powder but it almost develops this kind of like film or crust on top and I know that sounds like such an unappealing word. Who wants a crusty makeup product? I'm not talking about like crusty as in crusty skin. Think of like a crust on a creme brulee. Basically I think there's something in this formula that kind of sets down a little bit until it's warmed up by the warmth of your cheek or your finger. It's really beautiful. The best way to apply this and what really made me fall in love with this is learning how to use this. And what I like to do is I do use a stippling brush with this product, but I first take my finger and kind of swirl it in here until it starts to warm up and get tacky. And you'll kind of feel when that happens, it starts to kind of liquefy a little bit. And then I'll just kind of swipe it onto the back of my hand like this. Then I will take my stippling brush and kind of work the product into the brush and then go onto my cheeks. And that's definitely my favorite way to apply it. The highlight I don't like quite as much as the blush. It's very, very subtle, but it's really beautiful if you like a creamy, subtle highlight. It's a very unique product, but the more I've been using it and learning how to use it throughout the year, the more I've been reaching for it and falling in love with it. So now I have a couple of powder highlighters to share with you guys. The first one is from Ofra Cosmetics. This year was my first time trying out the Ofra Cosmetics highlighter formula. I've been wanting to try it out for years. I ended up grabbing the one that was a collaboration with Samantha March here on YouTube, which is actually a mix of two of her favorite highlighters, which are Star Island and Pillow Talk. Now my highlighter, I dropped and shattered before I even had a chance to use it, literally the day that I got it. So I had to repress it. It looks a little bit ridiculous, which is so unfortunate because if you've ever seen Ofra highlighters, they are probably the prettiest inside the packaging that I've ever seen. But the highlighter itself is still absolutely absolutely beautiful. So this one's basically a combination of this kind of pink toned highlighter, which is Pillow Talk, and the kind of more champagne gold color, which is the color Star Island. And the combination of these two is so stunning. This is the highlight that I am wearing today, and it is so lovely. The Ofra formula in general is just very unique. It's a very intense blinding highlight, but if you use a light hand, 
it looks natural in a way and there's just something about the the finish of it it's very refined there's no glitter in it it's just a very smooth refined very reflective pearly shimmer it's really beautiful I absolutely love this highlighter it's been one of my most reached for highlighters since I got it over the summer I don't think they sell this particular one anymore but if they don't I just recommend their formula in general you could definitely pick up the pillow talk or the star island or maybe one of their other shades I just think the formula of this is very unique and very stunning the next highlighter I wanted to talk about is this right here, this is the Natasha Denona Super Glow. This is a very expensive highlighter and I'm not typically one to splurge for high-end highlights because I think you can definitely find really good highlighters at a much more affordable price than this one in particular. But if you are someone that appreciates really good packaging, I think you will absolutely love this. The highlight inside is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely stunning. You can use it with a light hand to get a very subtle look or you can build it up and get some really nice, intense reflectiveness. I really do like the formula. It's nice and shimmery. It's not glittery, but I think more than anything, the packaging is what really makes me enjoy this. Now, I'm not one to always splurge on good packaging, but I recognize why people appreciate good packaging. And if you are one of those people that really likes to splurge and enjoys good packaging, that's going to be sturdy, that's going to feel nice and high quality in your hand, I think this is one that's definitely worth looking into. So I do have a couple of face palettes that I wanted to share with you guys today. And it's these two right here. And this one right here is the Smashbox Cali Contour Palette. Technically, I picked this one up in the year 2018. It has been around for a while, but I fell in love with it in 2019. Another face palette that I really loved to death, especially in the summertime, is this one right here from Cover FX. This is their Perfector Face Palette in the light medium version. So I want to start off by showing you guys the two palettes next to each other so you can kind of see the differences because they definitely both have kind of a different setup, a different feel, different tones to them. But I love both of them and I honestly could not pick one over the other because I love them both kind of for different reasons and I think they might suit different people. So the Cover FX palette has two somewhat deeper highlighters. They actually look a lot deeper in the pan than they appear on your cheeks. I assumed when I got these that they would not work for me, but they actually do work for me, especially in the summertime. In the dead of winter, I probably won't be able to use these, but it does also include this shade in the middle that's basically a reflective kind of white color. It does include this really beautiful matte bronzer in here and this really beautiful pop of pink blush color, which I absolutely love on my skin when it's a little bit more tan. This is the palette that I could not stop reaching for in the summertime. I also love this one as an eye palette. Now I know you can use both of these palettes as like a full face of makeup kind of palette if you're traveling, but I actually think I like this one a little bit more because it includes this really reflective white highlight, which I think gives the whole palette a little bit more versatility, not just for your face, but also for your eyes. However, the Smashbox palette is also really beautiful. This one I think is for someone that's really more into their bronzers than into their highlighters because while the Cover FX palette includes three highlighters and just one bronzer, this is kind of the opposite. It includes three bronzers and one highlighter. So if you're someone that really burns through your bronzers and you do a lot more bronzing than you do highlighting, I think you might prefer this one a little bit more. Also the blush in this one is a little bit more neutral toned. And I think I do prefer the setting powder in this one because it is a little more of like a ivory kind of yellow color whereas the one the Cover FX palette is a little bit more of like a pink tone. I can use both of them. They're relatively sheer. As for the bronzers, I think the formulas are both really lovely. You can kind of see that these two colors right here are almost identical. So again, I don't think that you need both of these palettes but I've loved and used both of them equally this year so I wanted to mention them both and I just think there's something about having a really good face palette that's kind of essential to a makeup collection especially if you travel a little bit. These are just so handy, easy to travel with. You can get a complete eye look out of them as well. Really beautiful palettes, beautiful formulas. Absolutely love them and recommend them both. So as mentioned I am going to be doing my eyeshadow palettes in a separate video but I do have a couple of single eyeshadow products I wanted to mention to you guys that I've really been loving. These are the NARS single eyeshadows. Now, I picked these up in my Marshalls. I've also heard they are often at TJ Maxx if you have access to those stores. I paid just $5.99 for each of these, which I believe full price, they're around $20 or possibly even more. I would not pay that much for a single eyeshadow ever, I don't think. But if you can find them for that discounted price, or if you're someone that doesn't mind spending a little bit more for a single eyeshadow, I think these are absolutely stunning. Now the reason I wanted to specifically mention these, so this one right here is actually broken, which if you buy makeup at Marshalls, that's sometimes the name of the game. But this one is in the color Verona. It's a very kind of silvery, taupey, light purple. 
What I love about these shadows is they have this very smooth reflective quality that if you're someone that likes to wear shimmer on your lids but you like something that's a little bit more smoothing, that's not as textury looking or doesn't emphasize, maybe if you have folds in your lids or fine lines in your lids that you are concerned about, this is the type of formula that I would absolutely recommend. It looks beautiful and smoothing on the eyelids. This is in the color Banquise, I think, which is kind of like a silvery blue. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see just how smooth and reflective these are. They're so pretty. And this is probably maybe the most like versatile one that I have. This is in the color Cashmere. Every time I say Cashmere, I think of Seinfeld. Anyone else? This one is a little bit more of like a taupey kind of silver. It's so pretty with any cool tone color or even like a neutral tone color thrown into your crease. This is just such a beautiful simple eye look that gives you that really reflective bright lid that's not overly textured looking. It's just so beautiful. I love that type of a shimmer formula. I have tried similar formulas to this. I think the Persona formula, her shimmers in her first palette, the Identity One palette, is very similar to this. It's a very smoothing kind of refined formula. I also think the metallic formula in the Tati Beauty palette is very similar. It's almost like a metallic that leans a little bit more towards like the satin side. So pretty. If you can find these in your Marshalls or TJ Maxx, I would absolutely recommend them. Or if you're just someone that likes to splurge on individual shadows, you love a good formula, these are amazing. Okay, so now we are moving on to lip products. And I have one lipstick this year that was high-end that was a love at first use product. And it is relatively new to me, which some of you might say, if it's so new to you, should you be mentioning it? But this is the best lipstick that I've ever tried. This is from Bite Beauty. This is their Amuse Bouche Lipstick in the color Honeycomb. Now, unfortunately, this lipstick, I believe, is currently out of stock. If I can find it on Bite Beauty's website, I will link it down below. I've heard that they are completely reformulating this lipstick. I hope that it is going to be as amazing as these ones are and that they have the same colors because this is such a beautiful nude color for me. This is the one I am wearing on my lips today. It's the perfect mix of like a pink with a little bit of peach and a little bit of like a brownie mauve gray. It basically has a little bit of every shade of nude lipstick that I love all thrown into one perfect tone and formula. It's so comfortable, it's very creamy, it's very richly pigmented, but it makes your lips look beautiful and smooth. I love this stuff. And I'm almost kicking myself for not buying two of this because it's just my perfect nude. Like I feel like I've officially found my perfect nude lipstick and it is absolutely beautiful. But the next lipstick I want to mention is actually a liquid lipstick from Persona. Now this was sent to me a couple of months ago from Persona Cosmetics. I've been a fan of her liquid lipstick formula for a long time. I have all of her original shades. Are they OG, Holy Grail, and I forget the pink one. I love Holy Grail. That's a really great basic red. But if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you will know that I have kind of a deep love for an orange toned red lipstick. I feel like everyone looks good in a slightly orange toned red. And this color Phoenix by Persona is such a perfectly done orange toned red. So let me swatch this one for you guys and I'll actually swatch it next to Holy Grail which is her original red lipstick. So here is Phoenix and then here is the color Holy Grail. I do really love this color as well. So there's Holy Grail right there. This is like an old Hollywood kind of classic red lip color. But you can see the difference there. This one just has a hint more of like a corally orange color to it. It's so pretty and brightening. I feel like it looks amazing when your skin is very fair. Or if you have a little bit of a tan or if you're more deeply complected, it just kind of brightens up your whole face and brings life to your face. I absolutely love it. The Persona formula is really nice and very thin. So if you're someone that's not a big fan of matte liquid lips, this is one of my favorite matte liquid lipstick formulas. I'm not a huge fan of matte liquid lips because they can be so drying on my already dry lips, but if I'm wearing a red lipstick, I want something that's not gonna move around, that's not gonna get on my teeth, that's not gonna get on my shirt. I mean, red lipstick can get everywhere, but these stay in place, they last quite a long time, and they're relatively comfortable considering that they do dry down all the way. And speaking of Persona, I had to mention this as well. I hesitated mentioning two things that I got in PR from Persona, but their lip gloss, specifically this one in the color Honey, has spent the most time in my purse since I got it a couple of months ago. This is a beautiful lip gloss formula. I am wearing this one on top of the Bite Beauty lipstick. It's the type of formula that's like, has a good amount of color to it, but also has a little bit of sheerness. So here it is right here. You can see it's kind of just like a nice 
beigey sort of peachy nude i love the formula of these they're very comfortable i feel like they're actually priced pretty reasonably these are 16 dollars, which i know is a little bit more but when you consider that a lot of drugstore glosses are between 8 and 12 dollars, i don't feel like that's that much more and i absolutely love the color and the formula of all of these especially this one in honey but one more gloss that I really fell in love with is this one right here. This is from Fenty Beauty. This is their mini gloss in the color Fussy. I got the Glossy Posse mini holiday set. This was the one inside of that set that is an original shade of theirs, and I, I love the shade. I've been using this very consistently. I love the formula of this. I would say this one has a touch more sheerness than the Persona one. Let me just swatch that next to the Persona one. It's a little bit more sheer. And it's a little bit more sparkly, like it gives your lips a little bit more of a sparkle. But it also, if you're wearing a lipstick or a lip liner underneath, it's going to let a little bit more of that color through. The Persona one, I feel like it's better for like a throw in your purse when you have nothing else on your lips and you need some color. This one I feel like is going to give you a little bit more color, whereas this one's going to give you a little bit more sparkle. Neither of them are sticky. They're both a beautiful, comfortable, lightweight, comfortable formula, and I would absolutely recommend either of these. So the last thing I have to mention for you guys are just a couple of higher-end brushes that I have been really loving this year. The first one is this right here. You have probably seen this in pretty much every video that I have filmed for you guys this year. This is the Luxie tapered highlighter brush. I use this anytime I put highlighter on, which is pretty much every day. Honestly, this and the Morphe M504 are the two brushes that I probably don't go a day without using. I love this brush specifically for highlighter, but it also works really well for blush, especially if you're working with something like this right here, the ambient lighting powders that have smaller pan sizes. This is the perfect size brush to get into these pans without getting into the other shades inside here. It's the perfect density. It's super soft. I absolutely love this. It would even work great as a setting powder brush if you're someone that likes to very selectively set your face down with powder. I feel like this would be the perfect brush for that as well. The next one I have to share with you is also from the same set as that other Luxie brush and this is the Luxie Duo Fiber Powder Brush. Now since this has kind of been the year of cream, blushes, and bronzers, this is the brush that really made those products work for me. I love this, not just because it's a stippling brush. You can use any of those products with pretty much any stippling brush. Elf has a really affordable stippling brush that works very well, but the reason I love this one specifically is it's rounded at the top and it's also kind of pinched. It gives you the perfect balance between blending things out and being big enough to blend things evenly, but also being small and shaped in a way that gives you some precision as well. It's just a really interesting shape for a stippling brush that I feel like makes it just a step above my other stippling brushes. And the last one I want to share with you guys is this right here. This is the Wayne Goss number 18 brush. I have been wanting to replace my MAC 217 brush for a while because that brush is like 12 years old and it's really seen better days. It is officially falling apart and I knew I needed to replace it soon. So when I ordered my Hourglass palette from Beautylish, I decided to throw this into my cart so that I could get the $20 gift card that they were running during their gift card bonus event. So I ended up picking out this brush and I have to tell you guys, this is such a great brush and there's a couple of reasons that I absolutely love this brush. Number one is the shape of it. This is just like the MAC 217 brush in that it's kind of like a fluffy blending brush, but as you can see, it's somewhat pinched right here. And the reason I love that is because this is a great multi-purpose brush. You can basically do anything that you would need to do on your eyes with this brush. You can pack color on, you can precisely place color into your crease, you can blend color up through your transition or in your crease. You can even turn it sideways and run it under your lower lash line. It's the type of brush that can do anything that you need an eye brush to do. But the number one reason I love and would recommend this brush, even though it's a little bit higher priced, is because of how soft it is. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I do a lot of seven looks videos, and there's sometimes when I do those videos that I'm kind of cramming my last couple looks into one day. So by the third time I'm washing off my makeup in the day, the outer corners of my eyes can get extremely sensitive and I start to notice that some of my brushes that never felt scratchy or bothered me before suddenly really irritate my eyes. But this brush does not do that. It's just so incredibly soft. There is no scratchiness to this at all. So if you are in the market for a really good quality brush, I would highly recommend this one. I can't really comment on its longevity. My hope is because it's Wayne Goss, it's gonna last for a really long time, but I've only had this for about three months now. But as for the way it's been working for me lately, I, I just think it's a great, 
great multi-purpose brush. All right, you guys, and with that, that is it for my favorite high-end products of the year. I would love to know what high-end products you guys tried out this year that you absolutely loved, especially if I didn't mention them today. I'd love to hear your recommendations. Be sure to leave those in the comments down below. Stay tuned for my next video. We will be talking about the best products from 2019 from the drugstore, but thank you all so much for stopping by. If you are new to my channel, welcome again. I hope that you'll consider subscribing before you leave, and I will see all of you guys very soon in my next video. Bye. The next cheek, the next cheek product, oh my gosh, includes this real, if I just had a piece of egg on my lip that entire time, I am sorry that you all had to look at that, but I do not want to start this video over. Way to win them over, Mandy. Scrambled egg, hanging out on your lip for half the video. Jeez, man. Jeez. If you eat scrambled eggs for dinner, before you film a video, you should probably swish your mouth out or brush your teeth, for heaven's sakes, before you push play. This is going to be a fun one to edit. I know I'm going to want to refilm it. Can't do it. Christmas has got to happen at my house. I need to start wrapping presents. <laughs>